The Bleichenbacher attack was first demonstrated by Daniel Bleichenbacher in 1998. It is an adaptive chosen ciphertext attack against RSA encryption with PKCS1 version 1.5 padding. It is also referred to as the million message attack, because in its original publication, Bleichenbacher estimated that it takes about 1 million queries to decrypt an arbitrary ciphertext. If you only want information on countermeasures, feel free to skip to the end of the video to get some easy to implement advice on how to protect yourself against Bleichenbacher's attack. Imagine Bob sends a message to Alice and Mallory is the attacker. The ciphertext for the encrypted message M is called C and Mallory is able to snoop it. In adaptive chosen ciphertext attacks, an adversary wants to decrypt the ciphertext without knowledge of the decryption key. To gradually reveal information about the encrypted messages, Mallory modifies the original ciphertext C into multiple ciphertexts and sends the resulting ciphertext C1 through CN to Alice. Alice answers with whether the padding was valid or invalid. Note that Alice might not literally answer with the information whether or not the padding was valid or invalid. Instead, Alice might behave differently upon receiving a malformed message than when receiving a correctly formatted message. Mallory is therefore able to identify whether the padding in the modified ciphertext is valid or invalid, and thereby learn something about the plain text of the message. To achieve this, Mallory could make use of a side channel on the receiver side, which responds with different error messages depending on whether or not the message has a correct padding. This process is repeated until Mallory is able to reconstruct the original plaintext message M. To modify the original ciphertext and gain knowledge about the plaintext, Mallory exploits ciphertext malleability. An encryption scheme is called malleable if a given ciphertext C can be transformed into another ciphertext C', prime, which can be decrypted to the message M', prime, where M' prime is the decrypted message for the ciphertext C'. Prime. This might eventually lead to some information about the plaintext of the original ciphertext C. Let's have a look specifically at RSA and its malleability. The encryption in RSA is defined by the message M to the power of E modulo N, where E and N form the public key. The decryption in RSA is defined by the ciphertext C to the power of D modulo N, where D is the private key. In RSA, we are able to multiply the encrypted plaintext with a factor s to the power of e without having to know the private key. When this new multiplied ciphertext c' prime is decrypted, it will also result in the original message m multiplied with the same factor s to the power of e. This makes the ciphertext in RSA malleable. RSA is commonly used in combination with padding methods, such as PKCS1. PKCS stands for Public Key Cryptography Standards and defines a group of specifications for asymmetric cryptosystems. PKCS1 is the RSA cryptography standard. Padding in RSA is used to randomize the ciphertext. Without padding, when sending the same plaintext message twice, it would result in the same ciphertext. The basic task of the PKCS1 version 1.5 encryption padding scheme is to prepend a random padding string with a length greater than 8 to a message k and then apply the RSA encryption function. In case of TLS, PKCS1 is used for encapsulation of the premaster secret exchanged during a handshake, which consists of 48 bytes. The first two bytes of the premaster secret contain a 2-byte version number. The remaining bytes are chosen by the client at random. In this example, a 2048-bit key is used. Therefore, the padded message is 256 bytes long. The premaster secret is prepended with 208 additional bytes, always starting with the two bytes 00 and 02. This is essential for the Bleichenbacher attack. Bleichenbacher's attack enables an adversary who is in position of a ciphertext C0 to recover the encrypted plaintext M0. The only prerequisite for this attack is the ability to access an oracle O that decrypts a ciphertext C and responds with a 0 or a 1, depending on whether the decrypted message M starts with the two bytes 00 and 02 or not. We will call this oracle O of C. If the oracle replies with a 1, 
We know that the plain text message corresponding to the modified ciphertext is between 2b and 3b-1, where b is 2 to the power of a times the bit length of the public key n-2. The algorithm is based on the malleability of the RSA encryption scheme as mentioned earlier. Because of this, an attacker can repeat this query with a factor s that is incremented in every step that the oracle outputs a zero. Once the adversary has found an s for which the oracle outputs 1, we learn that m0 times s minus r times n is between 2b and 3b. This allows the attacker to reduce the set of possible solutions. By iteratively choosing new values for s and querying the oracle, the attacker narrows down the interval which contains the original m0 value. He repeats these steps until only one solution in the interval is left. An obvious countermeasure is to not use RSA encryption. In TLS version 1.2, you can disable all cipher seeds that start with TLS underscore RSA. This can be done both on the client and server side. It is important to protect yourself also on the client side, because you can never be sure that the server implements all countermeasures correctly. If you still want to use RSA, you can do so, but simply not use PKCS1 version 1.5 padding. Instead, use paddings like Optimal Asymmetric Encryption Padding, which has been proven secure in the random oracle model. If you don't want to forego PKCS1 version 1.5 padding, you can prevent access to the oracle, but this can be hard to implement in practice. One way is limiting access permissions to the side channels. Another way is to always respond with alert messages. Once the server receives the client key exchange message, it proceeds as follows. It generates a random pre-master secret and attempts to decrypt the ciphertext located in the client key exchange message. If the ciphertext was valid, it proceeds with the decrypted pre-master secret. Otherwise, it proceeds with the random value. Since the attacker does not know the pre-master secret value, the attacker is not able to compute a valid finished message. Therefore, the client finished message is always responded with an alert message, and the attacker cannot determine PKCS1 version 1.5 validity. If you want to learn more about TLS, go ahead and visit our website at tlsacademy.cs.upb.de.